Abdel Nasser was a historical figure of considerable significance in the Middle East, whose legacy has heavily influenced policy in several nations. Gamal Abdel Nasser, to millions of Arabs, was a classic example of a charismatic hero who comes into historical being to lead his people, a symbol that represents the aspirations of generations before and beyond him. He was also known as the man whose work was both achievements and disastrous. To answer these and other questions... On the day of his death, more than six million people from all over okay. Egypt marched behind and around his coffin simultaneously in scenes across the country. Appearing on foreign television for the first time, President Nasser himself since the 1967 war. Even today, 90 years after his birth, Nasser remains again to millions of Arabs all over the world, the savior who died, who died while preaching. Nasser came to revolutionary leadership through military service. The son of a postal worker, he had joined in demonstrations as a schoolboy. In the army, his seriously intense personality showed he had marked qualities of leadership. January 15th, 1918, Nasser was born in the village of Beni Moore near the city of Asyut. October 2nd, 1938, Nasser begins his education at the Royal Military Academy in Cairo. He was only 34 when he came to power, but he quickly became the wildly acclaimed hero of his fellow countrymen. January 1st, 1939, Nasser graduates from the Royal Army Academy and serves in the Army of Sudan. January 1st, 1949, Nasser joined what is known as the Free Officers, a group of composed junior army officers committed to unseating the Egyptian monarchy and its British advisors. August 8, 1950, Nasser is promoted to colonel in military status. Gamal Abdel Nasser took over Egypt in 1952. Leaders great and small sought him out, all no doubt with their own interests in mind, or such is the nature of international power politics. And Nasser created for his own people a spectacle of power which resembled the dreams of all dictators. Nasser was the first true Egyptian to hold true power in Egypt for more than 2,000 years. And one of his major ambitions was to uh, reawaken the sense of Egyptian consciousness, identity, to revive a sense of pride and self-respect. When I first met Gamal Abdel Nasser, I was greatly impressed by his quiet charm, his dignity, and his commanding presence. But the most impressive thing was the reaction of the Egyptians in the room. There was a great buildup of tension and expectation, as though some godlike figure were about to, to arrive on the scene. The Egyptians had turned Nasser into a sort of new pharaoh. They saw in him qualities that he did not have, and they expected from him deeds that he would be unable to perform. February 1st, 1954. The reign of Nasser begins as he has the Muslim Brotherhood banned, doing this without consulting any of his staff. October 26th, 1954. The famous Manchia incident took place in the city of Alexandria. <laughs> The Muslim Brotherhood attempted to assassinate Abdel Nasser while he was giving a speech. Following the Manchia incident, Abdel Nasser dismissed President Naguib and placed him under house arrest in one of his old villas. Abdel Nasser then launched a campaign of arrests that affected almost all the members of the Muslim Brotherhood and led to the execution of six members, including Judge Abdel Qadir Oda, the author of the Encyclopedia of Criminal Legislation in Islam.
وبعيد الكرامة January 23rd, 1956, Nasser was elected as president of Egypt. January 1st, 1958, Egypt and Syria formed the United Arab Republic with Nasser as the head. This was, at this time, considered the first step towards Arab unity. May 10th, 1961, the United Arab Republic breaks up after a coup in Syria. Nasser kept the name, although only Egypt was a member of the United Arab Republic. راحوا شاتمين جمال عبد الناصر بالفاظ بذيء. اركب هنا يهزوا الحكومه. النهارده ما يشتمونا نقدر نضربهم بالجزمه كمان ونشتمهم من اكبر واحد لاقل واحد. الاساطيل هنا فور سعيد هزموهم. هل الاساطيل نفعت معانا سنه 56 ولا بتوع المظلات؟ صرفوا 100 مليون جنيه وطلعهم بحسرتهم. طلعهم النهارده ما قدامهمش الا انهم يشتمونا والله ما بيشتمونا بنشعر ان احنا ناس مهمين بقى كان زمان يسقط رئيس وزراء المملكه المصريه النهارده اما بيشتمونا طب ما احنا نقدر نشتمهم ملكه بريطانيا ولا رئيس وزراء بريطانيا ممكن قوي ما انتوا شتمتوهم هنا كتبت لهم ايه على الحيطه في بورسعيد نشعر بان احنا اقوية اما بتطلع الاذاعة البريطانية وبتقول ان جمال عبد الناصر كلب مثلا زي ما قالوا يوم وانتوا ولاد ستين كلب وبعدين بنقول والله ده احنا بين كويسين بالسنة والشروط August 29th 1966 سايد كوت a leading member of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood was convicted of plotting the assassination of Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser and was executed by hanging. The trial ended with a death sentence for Qut and six other members of the Muslim Brotherhood. The secular Egyptian government of Gamal Abdel Nasser imprisoned and tortured him and finally in 1966 executed him. May 18, 1967, Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser orders the United Nations Emergency Force to leave Sinai. June 1, 1968, Nasser launches the so-called War of Attrition. August 7, 1970, Nasser ends to agree to end the fight with Israel.
September 28, 1970, Nasser suffers a fatal heart attack and dies. This forces government to re-elect a new president, which starts a new era of Anwar Sadat. There was something very Egyptian about Nasser's funeral, where more than 40 people died. The people expressed their grief and despair, to be sure, but beneath there was also, perhaps, a sense of relief. Within a few months of Nasser's death, his successor, Anwar Sadat, began to chisel Nasser's name like an ancient pharaoh out of the monuments that he had raised. He undid much that Nasser had done. He reversed the policy of hostility toward the West and friendship to the East. He revised the socialist economic nature of the economy, and he curbed the hated Nasser secret police. And most importantly, he moved to a peace treaty with Israel. In all this, Sadat had the overwhelming support of the Egyptian people. Where does this leave Nasser's place in history? It is still too early to tell. The last act must still be played out. الدول اللي بقت دول من الدرجة الثالثة تشتم زي ما تشتم تشتم زي لما الدرجة الثالثة عندها أكبر راس عندهم وثاني راس عندهم وثالث راس عندهم ولا يهمنا برأس وبنبص لهم باحتقار وبنقول هذه خيبة الاستعمار السنة اللي فاتت كان بيشتم وبيقول جمال عبد الناصر كذا وكذا والشعب المصري كذا وكذا هيشتموا وفضلوا يبقوا دولة من الدرجة الرابعة واللي بعدها دولة من الدرجة الخامسة ونقعد احنا هنا نتفرج عليهم